name's John Easton. Um, I guess uh, my role was I had that hair brain idea about 12 months ago, um, looking for a new challenge. And thankfully, I had seven mates silly enough to jump on board very quickly. Good old Johnny Easton. I had a little phone call from John just after the uh, Cairns uh, Ironman last year, and his words were, Adam, are you ready for your next adventure? It's a pretty simple one. I was in uh, holidays in Dubai with my uh, with my wife, and I got an email from Scott Gilbertson, who uh, is my next door neighbour in Sydney. And uh, I, I spent a couple of minutes researching Ram, and went straight back to Scott and said, "I'm in." What first got me into this was a random email from John Eastham saying, "I've got the next big thing planned," and. So I think I responded with I'm in before I actually knew what it was. So I think what's keeping me committed is just the idea of riding across a continent just sounds so ridiculous that how could you not want to try it? I googled world's toughest bike race. You know, I had no idea what was going to pop up and this come to the top and within a minute of that popping up I rang Scotty. He was in just instantly. I, I'm a big believer that you can do anything if you put enough time into it, um, enough dedication into it and um, yeah, anything is, is really possible. I really do believe that. I feel good. I feel good. I'm a little nervous, um, but I can't wait to get on that bike. Uh, I can't wait to, you know, represent the country and do all the family and friends proud. I, I, I'm feeling really good and I'm ready to go. The training became harder and harder as uh, the time got on because other stresses get in the way and there's lots of hours. And I think that the, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks, certainly the family felt the fact that we were never around and, um, you know, we were all trying to keep a positive attitude, but we had to fight through that. It's exciting in life to travel for a few reasons, and one of them is to do a sporting event. As far as training goes, it's been enjoyable, it's been challenging at times, but definitely a um, great experience. In life and a lot of things, I always focus on the destination, you know, and when we get there, when we get there. I hope for once I can make this about the journey. Oh, I'm pretty keen to get started. I you know, probably could have started a couple of days ago. It's been you know, twiddling my thumbs for the last couple of days wanting to get into it. We've got a cracking crew. Everyone's you know, been fantastic since we've got here. Might as well make the most of it and enjoy the experience. The most satisfying and interesting thing working with a team is how much effort they're putting. None of them are doing 40 hour week. They're all doing 40 hour plus week. So they're working hard, but then on top of that, they've done 16 hours, 20 hours, training a week on the bike. Most endurance events are about holding back so you can get through it and going as, you know, there's that really fine line, but we're, we're going above that line. I think our crew's really well prepared, but there's only a certain level of preparedness you can have when 14 crew and four riders have never done anything like this before. Pre-race feelings um, uh, were a little nervous um, before I got on the plane to come over, but they've, those nerves have settled down. Um, a little bit of stress in the in the vehicle setup and, and and just getting everything together the last couple of days, but now that's all out of the way. We've got 24 hours to really just relax and um, and, and get this job done. So no, feeling good, feeling really comfortable. My 
name's uh, Adam Carmichael, I'm from Townsville, North Queensland in Australia. To be honest, I just want everyone to have a good time, be safe. Um, obviously we've got some pretty strong goals on where we want to finish. If we average the 31 and a half k's an hour, you know, we get in at midnight over there on Friday. That may get us a podium, um, a little faster would be nicer. But it's just such an unknown at this stage. Uh, I think we all just need to watch our power and realise that this is a big long race and just do one day at a time and just go step by step. Well, this is it, 2015-34th race across America. These guys are all here supporting us for I don't know why. Um, so I really, really want them to have a good time as much as we can. I, I'm fairly, fairly calm. I've got to say. I mean, I, uh, I I'm really confident with the amount of training that's been done. I I, uh, I feel good. Maverick, in case you're wondering who's the best, they're up there on the clock. Yes, yes. sir. <laughs> Cut. I can't tell you how excited I am. I couldn't imagine being more ready for this than I am now. I couldn't have done any more training with balancing everything in life. I couldn't have done any another kilometre. Maverick, in case you are wondering who was the best, they're up there on the clock. Do you think you'll be up there on the clock one day, Maverick? Yes, sir! That's pretty arrogant, Yes, Maverick. sir! Well, it's Hollywood, <laughs> I just... <laughs> Why Sorry, I've just come out of pre-show like makeup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick the older one. We are here. Uh, terrified. Absolutely terrified. <laughs> Time station two, we're going to three. So we're going that way. You're going that way, and, and that's your picture. Yes. So basically, nothing special. For... All right, so I've got a good 10 miles. So I'm glad. Bang it. Right. All right. So a little bit of that, and then. Woo. Yeah, no, we're, we're starting three. three. No, no, I'm. Good on the road. I'm starting three. Let's down the road. Yeah, yeah, I'm starting three. Two minutes. Yeah, 90. Yeah, we need to ring him back. He's got. He's all. 
Mate, right now we're it's our it's our first full changeover. It's our first full rider changeover because they were kind of different changeovers earlier. This is the first full rider and crew changeover, and our captain and our vice captain are doing a great job on the road, and we're kind of trying to figure out how we do a changeover. But we'll get there. And the most important thing we've decided is, even if we don't get it quite right, as long as Adam's on that bike when they get here, we're all good. So we've got live tracking here. Uh, we're here, time station two. And this is the Team Chev here. We come around the corner, head into town, possibly about five minutes. The team's just getting ready over here now for the changeover. We've already got the rider over on the other side of the road. And we're looking at a good crew changeover at this point. Everyone's pumped. <laughs> oh man, chaos, as you can see I'm standing here and my heart rate's 120. This is madness. Anyway, it'll get better. We've had six, seven months of training for this and uh, yeah, just a thrill to be there. It was tough. I mean, uh, I, I'm not sure that anything can prepare you for the, uh, the heat we got out there, and it was a headwind the whole way, so uh, that made it a little more difficult too. But uh, still can't wipe the smile off my face. I'm having a ball. This is this is the beginning, and we've got a long way to go. Yeah, Paul and Michael, we're starting time station three now. Yeah, mate. Yeah, you're in direct follow. No, no. The hottest day I have ever experienced anywhere. That includes living in the penal colony that is Australia. It was ridiculous. So I think, I mean, I know it's 45 degrees air temperature, and I reckon it could have been 50 plus, like road temperature. It was insane. It was like trying to breathe standing in front of a blast furnace. It's just, yeah, it was awful. Got off, uh, couldn't eat, couldn't drink, until I vomited, and then I was all right. Oh. You're coming for a swim with me. You know, we have numbers that you try and hit in terms of heart rate and power, and I'm just going nowhere near them. Like, but I feel like I'm working as hard as I normally would be. It's just really it's like the sea of death, isn't it? You just got to ride to that. Yeah, that's it. And and I think part of it's the temperature. Yeah. You know, you did all this training to sort of and had your numbers pretty dialed in. Not even close. I had an excellent ride last night. I was pumped, loving it. And then this morning we hit a slight incline and a massive headwind and it took all the loving out of us. But we're uh, back ready to hit the hills and feeling good. Got some dry needling, legs are back, we're into it.
down heel specialist. <laughs> Well, we're 24 hours in. We had a good night last night. It was uh, quite fast through the uh, through the desert, quite windy, quite a few crosswinds. Um, I nearly had a bit of a stack at the bottom of a hill. There was um, a big sand drift across, um, which I hit full noise. Um, mountain biking skills, I think, got me through the through the gaff. Um, Johnny and I uh, spent the night in Parker a Place. Um, it was about 40 degrees at night time and it was that hot the uh, generator couldn't cope so shut down so we didn't have any air so Johnny and I didn't necessarily get any sleep last night um, and John and I have just come off about a five hour shift and um, it's about 40 degrees outside and a lot of climbing so you could say we're pretty puffed at the moment so we've got two hours off and a four-man pull and then another five hours or so so big day we're trying to hydrate Cheers. about uh, 10 minutes behind the Germans uh, Maximo, I think they're called. They passed us last night across the, the desert plains. Um, I think we've caught them up a little bit. And behind us is the team uh, crank addicts from Japan, the Aussie and uh, British guys. So we are quite a ways ahead of those. So it's quite a big gap to, uh, to fourth. So we're comfortably in third, but it'd be nice if we can do a four-man pull up this enormous mountain and win some back. So, we'll just see how we go. Go, go! couple of rides actually in fact today's been a tough day but it's been a good day we've um, consolidated our position so we're in uh, in third place uh, yesterday afternoon we're in a um, an epic battle with some of the German guys uh, um, battling for uh, second place and um, we we're passing each other for the, for a couple of time stations and uh, we got to the glass elevator and that's uh, that's where I come into my own so um, I think it's a couple of thousand metre drop in about 10k, so it's about a one in five drop. It's a, a serious descent, and um, yeah, I just I just let it go. I passed them like they were sitting still, and uh, had a ball. It went over 90k an hour. Uh, the heart was over 180 beats a minute, and I didn't even pedal. So yeah, it was game on, and um, yeah, we're in good shape. How was that view of the monuments as we came through? Sensational. I love this. We lost one. We lost one. We lost two. Adam. So what's happened to him now? He's having it, we've, we've stood him down for 10, for 24 hours. Okay. Doctor's orders. Doctor's orders, 24 hours, and we'll bring him back tonight. So these sort of three of them have been doing um, just doubles. Yeah. So right, Adam's gonna come back. I was on shift with Adam and um, it was really hot coming out of Flagstaff and he started to get a bit wobbly. I could see him wobbling a bit on the bike and the very last time he, he actually just swerved right in front of this truck and I could see his legs shaking and I knew he was in a bad way. I thought that was it, I actually thought we might have been might have been over and reality then set in about what that actually meant for the three of us while while we were doing that. And it was a tough it was a tough twenty four hours. I'm in the hurt locker, something shocking. No sleep. Just hard. My body's aching all over. Hard work. This is why they call it the toughest bike race in the world. Making some protein shakes for the guys, so they really like these. And it's just protein, yogurt, blueberries, and milk. Really easy, but they. 
I think they find it easier to drink compared to all the electrolytes stuff. Oh listen, I don't even know what it is. It's sort of day two and a half and uh, it's tough. The, the cycling, in all honesty, has been fantastic. And I don't think the cycling's been the tough part, I'll be honest. We've had some great rides, Mick and I. We've, pulling up some, we've pulled up a couple of the biggest hills and we're doing 300 yard pulls and loving it. Absolutely loving it. Um, so the cycling's been enjoyable. The, um, the logistics around the cycling, stressful, and then the um, sleep. So you, you, each time you get off the bike, you end up having to ride in the motorhome at you know 50 mile an hour on the really rough road. So it's really difficult to sleep. Um, and then my bike fell off the back of the car last night. <laughs> Got crushed. It was um, the most devastating thing in the world. Other than after that. Mick got lost and pulled up the steepest hill he's ever pulled up. So that was more that was more frustrating to me, the fact that he got lost. It wasn't his fault and had to pull up a big hill and I had to leave him for 10 or 12 miles to go and get my TT bike. Um, my bike's still in bits. Johnny Carey's confident that he'll fix it and so until it's um, back on the road, it's a TT bike for me. So hopefully not too many big hills. Here's a random crew member we picked up on the way, Billy Bob. Billy Bob, you like my hat? Showing the Malay. He he wears the Malay with his helmet sometimes. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Good luck, mate. You done well, eh? <laughs> Thanks, mate. Where are the bikes? We need a rider and a bike in there. Okay, right. you've got a rider over there. Yeah. I've got to go. Don't Don't you want to Need a key. Need the car key. Need a car key. Car key, come on. Car key. Alright, good. Have a good one, lad. Well done, guys. Oh, that downhill was a lot longer than I thought, actually. <laughs> nice. It was alright, yeah. It was hard, though. Like, the altitude, you, I really noticed that. Oh, yeah, a few things went wrong. But you know that that's what the race is all about. Yeah. That's why it's the toughest endurance race in the world, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> why is it Apparently the easiest one. <laughs> Apparently. Glad that we're at the top. <laughs> Who says big boys can't ascend? <laughs> this is only a short pull. Scotty's gonna take it down. See if you can keep up. Uh, we're at about 9,000 feet now, so yeah, it's getting a bit thin, but feeling great. You know, it's uh, 25 degrees or 30 degrees cooler than what we had yesterday. Uh, so the heart rate's under control. I got, had, got a good sleep last night, so we're back on track. So feeling good. Thanks, guys. Good, mate. 24 hours was just the right length of time <laughs> because our strategy lasted well for that. It wouldn't have lasted much longer. So it's very good to have him back. And probably I shouldn't comment on the race, I probably should comment on Adam's health. Um, it's good to have him back and healthy because we were a bit worried about him yesterday. But he's a bit soft. He's, <laughs> not, he's not really. It's, don't just don't put that in. He's a good guy. <laughs> Five, four, three, away we go. Go Johnny! It's uh, day four, we're in Ulysses in Kansas. I'm actually feeling not too bad at the moment. Um, yesterday I was quite tired, uh, but um, we're getting there. Look, hopefully this wind is going to be favourable. It's uh, going to be about 37 degrees again today and 20 knots. So if the 20 knots is from behind us, that's a good thing. If the 20 knots is on our nose like it was yesterday afternoon, it's no good at all. But um, everyone's, we're getting there. It's hard. It's a hard race.
On day two, basically, um, uh, in the afternoon, I, I suffered from a bit of heat stroke. Um, I was feeling fine in the morning and we are all really doing well to keep um, cool and hydrated. Um, but from about lunchtime, I started getting stomach cramps and uh, couldn't, didn't, couldn't eat, couldn't drink. Um, I just started getting dizzy. I was faint, uh, the trucks were around, I was getting dazzled and um, I pretty much uh, just made it to the uh, support car and, and collapsed. Um, fell off my bike and I was, I was a quivering mess. It was, uh, it, was, it was very scary actually. The officials came in, everyone did an amazing job, the crew were brilliant. Um, got my body temperature down as fast as possible. Trials and tribulations of RAM. We've just hit Kansas. So the, the, the morning rides went really well. They, they're nice rides, nice and cool. It's averaging about 40 k an hour this morning. We're back on the bike in a couple of hours. So it's the afternoon sessions we're finding the hardest. It's about 36 at the moment, which strangely feels cool compared to what we what we did have. Um, we're third, which is our, our goal. So we're, we're happy. I, I just have this feeling it's about to get to another level. That last pull was about 47k an hour. We had a sort of cross breeze but slightly at my back so it was nice. Yeah, the bike was working beautifully and the wind was really good. We're in a really good position so we've consolidated third now. Uh, we are still chasing second but they're, they're an hour or two up the road but that's okay. Uh, the vibe's good. Uh, we're good. I'm looking forward to a little break and then I've got another double shift so Just trying to manage manage the fatigue muscles. So uh, when I get back to the uh, the RV after a, a big pull like that, I like to get uh, back to loosen up anything that's tightened up so that I'm ready for the uh, the next ride. Personally, yesterday I drove for a 24-hour period with uh, small breaks in between stages, which could be one to one and a half hours at a time. But it's not as though you're. Um, you're sleeping straight away, you've still got to get out, check fuels, help with the crew in some aspect, um, look at supplies with the distance, especially at night with um, lack of spilt. You know, spilt, what's the word? That <laughs> facilities, lack of facilities. Um, but all in all, it's, um, it's really sort of trying to keep to a, a program on how often you are on when you can get someone to sort of back you up. Last night I could have gone, uh, I did go a little longer than I, um, I'd, I'd been programmed to, um, which gave a rest for the other driver. And, um, and I've had um, two, two breaks off this morning, two stages, and I'm um, back on the road again. Racing wise we're doing well. <laughs> um, we're still sitting in third spot. Um, Ride uh, the Germans are a couple of hours ahead of us, um, and then uh, guys called Crank Addicts. From, they're Tokyo based, but they're they're all expats. They're about an hour and a half behind us. Um, so race wise, we're doing well. We have got a penalty to serve though. Um, we don't know if it's going to be 15 or minutes, <coughs> excuse me, or an hour. Um, so we really need to have an hour and a half up on. Um, on whatever team it is going into that last um, penalty box to, to make sure we get a podium. We're um, about 10 hours off from having our midway stop, which I think, to, to be honest, with the crew hasn't talked about, they haven't been looking forward to, but I think we're gonna get a lot of respite out of that. Um, give, um, give some of the crew seven hours to have a, have a sleep, to get the other, the others guys are coming later about four to five hours at the moment we've been operating on sort of one and one and a half to two hours every 24 hours and then 
rest when you can, sort of 10, 15 minute power naps, I suppose. And the riders are the riders are positive. Um, they haven't had any spits yet. The crew's done things wrong. They haven't been 100% faultless. Um, but the, the riders have expected that, and, they've, and the little things that have happened, they've dealt with really well. We've, we've just come across a, um, a road close sign. Keep going back the same way you came. Did we have a route change from 24 to 25? 400 east? No, we should be on 400 east. If you're following the biker route, you're meant to be on 400 east. So at 38.6 miles, you're meant to turn right onto 400 east. Okay, so back from where we were, you want to go back eight miles where you get back to the 44.4 mile mark. Yep, so as you can see, really easy to get things wrong. Um, we've got five route books. Four route books had been updated. This, up, this route book hadn't. Um, I had my head buried doing something else. And um, yeah, we've gone eight miles out of our way. It's not gonna affect the race. But um, if that road close sign was maybe another 20 miles down the, the way, we would have missed our riders at the next checkpoint would have been redoing things, but lucky we got away with it. Yeah, we've had a really awesome day today. We've sort of worked out our program and routine and seems everything's slipping into place. It's been fantastic actually to see um, everything come together after what was really a stressful time um, coming through Colorado and um, we were so exhausted. The team was just, everybody was shot, but we've um, really got together and starting to get some ground back after some, you know, some mistakes that were caused through just everyone being too tired. I guess the um, really interesting part about the whole race has been that, you know, you've got to be ready to ride when it's your time. You, you know, there's just no time to have a dawdle or a chat. So the interesting part is that the other two riders and us, we don't speak much at all. We see each other very seldomly. Um, just ships in the night and um, so strategy wise it's sort of up to you so you rely on the team captain a lot and um, John Kerry's been brilliant at that just helping us get you know at the best out of us um, each day and they're putting in massive hours these guys they're sitting in the car with us a long time to help us help us get the best out of our rides and uh, really seeing everyone performing very very well. I'm sleeping between pools. <laughs> Getting a little power nap. Power naps. I've had three so far. Yeah. I nearly slept through a change. The plans that maybe we'd put in place in terms of how fast we'd be going or, or heart rate and power or whatever have kind of gone out the door a little bit. I think you just have to ride to how you feel you can sustain and that wasn't that wasn't the plan originally but look if I get to the other end then it worked if I don't then it was a bad plan I've just been blown away with the the crew they're just incredible I mean all the effort everybody's put in is amazing it's been just really humbling you're sort of sitting there and people are doing stuff for you and it's gonna be really hard to go back to civilization so from my wife's perspective and my daughter's perspective, give me the time to actually train to do it and then come away has been amazing. So, well, to everybody on Facebook who's watching this, it's been great to have your support and uh, a big kiss to you, my wife Sue and daughter Perry. Oh, I have to say hello to Danielle, Annabelle, and Amelia, my uh, wife and two lovely daughters. Um, ladies, so I haven't been in touch with you as much as I'd like to be. Um, otherwise, hello to everyone back in Australia and. Um, Hope you're enjoying watching us getting across America. Large vanilla milkshake, two burgers. I just got the last last pull up this massive hill. I don't know. But it was oh, yeah. all right. It was good. I got plenty of legs, just no ticker, and no um, I'm sleepy. In between pulls, honestly, it's leaving the car like this. Get up, pedal. I couldn't believe it. From the day we started, I was so nervous. But this is my daughter could do this. It's amazing. We've gone through so much countryside and the things that I remember 
uh, the strongest, hottest wind of my life going through Kansas. And for the last 20 miles, the worst roadkill smell ever. So when you're doing eight mile up a hill, and it just stinks like roadkill from the last week. They're dead armadillos everywhere. Is that what they are? Yeah. Wombat? No, the, the tough shell thing. Armadillos. Well, armadillos. Remnants of armadillos. So yesterday we had a really good day. The crew were rested well and everything was working well. This morning woke up, everybody was exhausted. <laughs> the speed of yesterday going through Kansas caught up with the tank. Because we had such a tailwind, you know, we were riding consistently above 45 kilometres an hour. And, um, you know, so you do a 95 miles pull and you'd be finished so quickly that they hadn't caught up yet. Yeah. And so the, the team was constantly on the chase trying to get in front of you. But today you can see the pace drop back, you know, again. Uh, the hills. The first time, you know, big fella like me really knows the hills because those bigger climbs we did in, in pairs and uh, they worked really well, but now you're getting out to these rollers, so you've got to really try to push down them to keep the momentum going. And um, we'd, we'd go down at sort of 50 kilometres an hour to try and get some momentum to get up the other side, and I can't for the life of me think you know you get to the top of one and go this and you can see the next 12 in front of you it's enormous I find it good fun I think that the thing I, I will remember most is the ripple strips both on the bike and in the car they, they are the loudest thing if you're asleep in an RV and uh, the RV driver goes over some ripple strips you uh, think that there's a train coming through the car it's so noisy they're about this deep so for my role is to organise at, the, at this stage of the race is to make sure we have the, the with John Carey, have the riders shift lengths planned two or three in advance and I match the crew roster associated with that. We've got, uh, we've got an odd number of crew, we've got John needs to be in the car two thirds of the time. Um, I need to be controlling things, I guess, the other two thirds of the time with an offset um, and then it's a matter of manipulating drivers around that vehicle. So you've got certain people who don't want to drive or can't drive the RVs, other yeah, other issues like that. Brittany, for example, is doing a fabulous job keeping the keeping the boys on track and fed and everything else to go with it. So limiting the time for her on any other jobs and everything else. So yeah, when we're on a down top of this, it's the filling the RVs with fuel, cleaning them out, shopping updating the routes because it's flooding through the through the Missouri Mississippi basin um, making sure that everyone is actually on the RVs when we leave for a start so we don't inadvertently leave someone behind um, and then putting all the children to bed when we're actually on the road yeah. <laughs> keep cheering for our boys hope they get home safe um, and all in one piece I'm sure they will thank you for your support well, we've been uh, worried about the Brazilian team who have been sitting pretty close behind. Uh, Jason, uh, Scotty and I to put in a, a really big effort in the last uh, leg. They were sitting 40 odd minutes behind. We've now put another 50 minutes into it. We reckon we've broken their spirits, mate. It's fantastic. Fully serviced bike. Fully serviced, ready to go. Uh, and roll. This has got a direction setting. Can I turn right and say east of it? <laughs> Stressful. Mate, I'm getting phone calls. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, it's sort of though. You guys do well. We went wrong one, one way a little bit. Or... <laughs> yeah, we went wrong. That was only probably two minutes. Yeah. Um, but coming through here, mate, Everyone's phone was flat. Yeah, these comms were flat. The, cap, the fire car wasn't following because it went the wrong way up the freeway. I'm getting phone calls, like, and then everyone's saying, it's on me. I'm like, what's going on here? But um, anyway, it's all good. I saw you pulled up. So, back at Ram, <laughs> oh, <Ben. laughs> we have been 
100% smooth the whole way. Nothing's gone wrong. Where are we? It's like Wednesday, it's 7 o'clock at night. <coughs> um, we're going good, we're going good. We're, we're still in third position, we've been in that position for a long time now. Um, the Brazilians and the Japanese look like they were eating some time into us. Um, but Al and Scott just did a great pull a couple of time stations back and we're now up by two hours, I think, something like that. So we just want to have a really good solid Thursday and hopefully then that takes the pressure off Friday as we come into Annapolis sometime Friday night. We do get a few breaks and I'm checking my phone um, for our Facebook page and um, texts and stuff. The guys are loving the support we're getting back home and everyone's been fantastic. Um, but yeah, then personally for me, um, I know my mum and dad, Beck, Tom and Soph, my kids, um, and in particular, uh, Bill Quick, um, yeah, just want to say good day to all their people. See ya. Adam. <laughs> Hello, I'm busy. <laughs> so the adventure continues. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun. It's been nice that we've been getting into a bit of a routine and uh, getting some sleep. Um, yesterday we were in, uh, in Kansas, Johnny and I had a, a very long long run at night time um, out in the uh, I think middle of nowhere in Kansas. We were by ourselves, I had this uh, went through this detour where there was all this gravel but for about five miles there was dead snakes all over the place and it was, uh, it was creepy. It was, it was just, I kept thinking to myself what are we doing out here? It was just amazing. You know, we had a good sleep last night. Um, then my first pull this morning was on a freeway and from the get-go, you know, we're doing 60, 70 kilometers an hour down this freeway. And I was just thinking, oh my Lord, this is extraordinary. Uh, you know, so, but then on the other hand, we went through some some, some little towns just now and uh, it was very complicated. Um, I think the uh, Ram officials throw some curveballs at the crew like this late in the, in the race just to see everybody's communicating because it's um it's hard it's, it's really hard to stay on track and we're getting a bit nervous that we've gone the wrong way but as it turns out everything's fine um, and we're still a couple of hours up on the Brazilians so you know who would have thought after uh, thousands of kilometers and somebody just mentioned that um, in 40 miles we've covered the same distance as the Tour de France so who would have thought after such a long way there's only a couple of hours between us and uh, fourth place so we just want to keep on pushing and uh, into Annapolis um, but we've all can recognize the support that we're getting from everyone back home in Australia so I just want to say honestly thank you very much I got a few text messages from the guys at work even you know just a little little line see you, Adam you're in third place still buddy keep on going you know that stuff means the world to all of us so this has been a long race a lot of highs and a lot of lows so uh, but it's going well feeling pretty good at the moment thanks a lot The most difficult time on the trip for all of us happened 5.30, 6 o'clock and Michael and I were coming in to a changeover point. We were told we were all to stop, we are going to have a meeting. The large amount of the crew were heavily fatigued. We had some or potential driver incidents and uh, one of the other cyclists was also heavily fatigued. So it, at that point then it all just went to bits if you like. Like every idea of what we were trying to achieve other than achieve a safe race had fallen to bits. What did we practice? All we practiced was how quickly do a fucking rider change and now we're not fucking riding. No, no, you're riding, you two keep riding, you're meeting the sleep and we're going to get going for another hour and a half. So hop back in the box. I'll drive in this one. You sleep. Practice how efficiently we changed, and now we've pulled off the road twice. We ride as three until we get strong, yeah. and the rest of the crew comes. Yeah, well, it's until we got till tonight. Much to everyone's credit, it turned around very quickly. 
um, we came up with a new plan. It was a successful plan and we got on and got going. And it was a real testament for the group of people we were with. Like, nobody got any more passionate than they needed to be. I had a bit of a tantrum about what I thought we needed to do, which was to, to continue. We split the team, some people rested, some people kept going. And at that point, it really cemented, if you like, the group that we were with. What an amazing day. <laughs> Every day has been amazing, to be honest. Cycling was awesome. We've got into town and our crew and one of our cyclists are just completely bonked. It's just thrown it into complete disarray. Like, like I don't know, there was a pro forma of what you did if something went wrong, you know? Well, we didn't have that. We didn't know where it was. We were just going crazy. Anyway, so um, Mick Shaddy came up with a bit of a plan to split the um, cars and motorhomes and leave the crew that needed to sleep. And so one motorhome and another car just smashed it ahead with the cyclists. We went to three-man pools for only a short period of time. Mick Callow was having trouble sleeping in a moving motorhome, but he put his head down and got into it. We probably did three-man pools for 25% of the daylight day. Mick got back on and we've just smashed it for the rest of the afternoon, had a cracking day, had a cracking day. So now we go into our hopefully what will be our last night and then we'll ride tomorrow Friday and prediction says we'll um, finish about two o'clock Saturday morning. So I'm um, loving it. Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick shout out to back home to um, Zach, Marley and my beautiful wife Jody. This morning um, through a time of fairly intense um, discussions, Lukey Gregson came over to me and handled me an envelope with um, notes from all my family and it was just awesome. And, and Zachy sums it up really well. He says, keep riding, stay strong, and don't stop for us, Daddy. There you go, and Marley Moo says, Dad, I love you, finish the race. Go, Dad, go. Thanks, kids, bye. It's been full on. It's busy. We've, uh, I think, uh, I always think it's like the, the, the riders are suffering and so are the crew, particularly at this point. We're all trying to get some rest. We're all done long hours in the cars and the RVs. So uh, it's just now about, at this late stage in the race, it's about our sleep, well, sleep management is where it's at, sleep management, work management, and I think we're just finally getting a, getting a grip on it, and uh, we'll uh, have hopefully sail to the end. I've, I've enjoyed all of it, to be honest. It's been hard work, long hours, just lots of stress, lots of great times, good times with mates. I think it's been fantastic. Probably one of the better experiences I've ever been in so far. I have no idea where we are in any of the race. Uh, where's Team Venge? <laughs> to be honest, um, I haven't been able to have a look. I've got no idea. I've just been so busy. You know, I don't even know what time of day it is, what day it is. It's just shift to shift. So, But it's been great. It's been really good. Got a call, um, Al, he's come down off his bike, a little bit of um, construction. I just feel for him, he's, he's wanted this more than anyone and now he's, um, it looks like he's got a broken collarbone. Pretty big separation, the separation, good inch and a half. So yeah, they're obviously gonna have to reset it or um, do some sort of surgery tonight. Hopefully he can join the boys at the finish line. He's not gonna get to finish, which is devastating for him. Um, there was a lot of roadworks on the, uh, the road coming through and at the end of the, uh, the roadworks before it got back to the normal there was just this lip and I hit the lip and the bike stopped so I went over the top at speed so that's it. You know hopefully this will spur the boys on and um, bring home a good result um, knowing that Al would want them to ride hard and yeah again I'm just, I just feel for Al, he, he just wants this so much, he's been so much and it was 24 hours ago and now he's, he's not going to get to finish the race. Um, race goes on, Race Across America is the world's toughest cycling race, so these things happen.
Following Alan, who has had an accident on his bike in some construction, he fell off a ridge and he has a suspected broken Take the next collarbone. exit on the right and continue following So we're escorting the ambulance, following the ambulance into the hospital to see whether he can get some x-rays and get sorted out. Will Alan be able to get there for the finish? It's possible, let's hope so. Um, we have to see what the doctor says, but if we Please can get him across the, the line in any on right. description, given all the effort he's put in, that would be wonderful. No, I'm, I'm gutted. I mean, uh, you, you trained so long for something like this, and uh, we were doing so well. And I, I was loving it, I was feeling strong, and probably just pushed a little hard through the uh, that area of roadworks. Didn't see the, uh, the, the end. There was a, a huge sort of uh, curve sort of thing and I, I just hit that and uh, the rest is history. I, I still feel like I've, uh, I've, I've participated in the race. I've had, a, I've had a great time. It's a horrible way to, uh, to end the experience but I, uh, I wouldn't have swapped it for quids and I wouldn't have stopped pushing hard. I mean, uh, oh, just push as hard as you can guys. You're, uh, you're three champion riders and uh, yeah, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. We had a good lead over the fourth team. And Jason walked over and just matter of factly just said, Al's come off, he's broken his collarbone. And yeah, it was, it was just a punch in the face. What went through my head uh, at the time of the accident first was just a feeling of absolute dread. I got up, I tried to pick my bike up and, uh, and keep on going, but it was quite obvious that that, that couldn't happen. Gutted was the, uh, the, the feeling because this is what I've been focusing on for so long. And not to finish on the last day particularly, it was something that uh, I, I was finding hard to reconcile. What time is it? It's some ridiculous hour in the morning. What is it? It's 3 o'clock? It's 3 a.m. in the morning in Ohio. I believe, Athens, Ohio. Um, so we have a fractured collarbone. It uh, probably needs to see an orthopaedic surgeon. But we've been given the okay to continue travel and finish the race as long as he doesn't race. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of painkillers. And um, yeah, we go where we want to be. Back on the RV with the crew and finish with everybody. better. just want to finish. We're just doing the best we can, honestly. I think it's 500 kilometres to go. I don't know. This is hard. We'll get there. Here we go. That's the new trend. Hot socks, hot shoes. I love it. Helmet, Johnny. Helmet. Helmet, man. Helmet. 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 Funny you know, it just feels as though Annapolis is further away than it's ever been on any day. <laughs> it does. Easy. 20. 10. Okay, Adam.
focused with Al, Al going down. Um, before he got taken to hospital, he spoke about um, <laughs> something. He just kept saying how sorry he was. So. We've got to hold this third spot. But as soon as we secure that, hopefully, with a few hours out, it's going to feel bloody fantastic. At any turn, you can lose the race. Like I'd say, we've taken probably six wrong turns, but the, the crew have been on them within 30 seconds. Mm. We've lost no time at all. But going through some of those time stations at night, there's like 40, 50 turns, um, badly signposted. And you've got guys that haven't slept in five days navigating us across this country. Mm. It's, yeah. it's intense. Couldn't do it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a team, yeah. it's a team of 17, 18 people, that's for sure. Well, look, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. Um, still gutted that I'm not out there uh, helping the team. I mean, that's, that's the, the most difficult part of, uh, of this whole incident. But look, I'm feeling a, a little better in the head. If I need to get on the bike, I can give these guys a break. But now that they're in a, uh, a, an out-and-out -out race for, uh, for third spot, I'm not going to do them any good. So, uh, But uh, ready to help where I can. I want to jump in the frogger and, uh, and give them all the support I can. I uh, clean kit on and I'm ready to go. Uh, if I need to, I'll be on that bike. Uh, pain's temporary, mate. This, uh, this memory's going to last forever. At least I'm not swearing at anybody. Okay, okay, off. Feeling a little better, so I'm going to get out there. These guys have been burning themselves, so I'm good enough to do something. Al broken collarbone, large separation. I think he thinks he's Tyler Hamilton, but the guy's bigger than me, so I'm not going to tell him to say no. Um, we're going to play it by ear. I've got Brendan in the car with him. If um, if he if it if it looks dangerous and he, he doesn't look like he's in control of the bike, we're going to pull him. But he wants to have a go. Um, if it, if it hurts too much and, and he can't control the bike, then we're going to pull him off. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not shocked to hear it at all. And um, yeah, I'll let him do it. If he's... We'll get attended afterwards. back on the bike but a little bit of pain. Hell's just climbing hills with a broken collarbone, it's just a very amazing man. He's bloody stubborn as an ox. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad he's on our team. Seventeen miles to run. <laughs> Ten. Ten miles. Seventeen. <laughs> 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 All 
10 miles to go. We've got 10, 10 miles, miles of racing go. left on the podium. Fastest Aussie team. Yeah, we're really happy. Really proud, man. Really proud of and all that, all those people in those RVs and cars. Just done an amazing yeah. job. Well, here we go. See at the finish line. We're heading back to San Diego. Who's coming? Yeah, just turn it around. It's only another 4,800. This is going to take, as Al said before, it's going to take days to sink in and work out what it is. It's just too, it's been too big of an event, I think, emotionally. You know, the cycling is one thing, but the emotion to get here is just unbelievable. The 14 people meet each other for the first time a week ago. Everyone's best mates. You know, it's a pretty special thing. And, uh, you know, we, we've done this uh, for ourselves, but we've also done it to inspire and help others. So uh, let's hope that that's worked too. New friendships, best thing for me. Yeah, look, I'm just really feeling um, grateful for the crew. There's a lot of sacrifice to get here. Um, you know, a hell of a lot of sacrifice, and uh, it's just, you know, to, to achieve what we did is, is very uh, satisfying. I've been involved in long distance sport for a long time, and this is by far the toughest by 10 times of any event I've ever seen, ever witnessed, and fuck. No one said we got a podium, we got... <laughs> <laughs>
think I speak for everyone, I think this is one of those events where it's tough and painful during the event, but in a month's time or two months time or six months time, all we'll do is remember how fantastic it was, what a beautiful country America was, and what a fantastic event the whole thing being and the whole experience has been for us. Certainly a, an event of a lifetime for us all. Kind of amazing the fact that we started on the Pacific coast of California looking out at the beach it was beautiful and then we ended up you know on the East Coast it doesn't seem real that you've ridden across a country or a continent in a week it's just bizarre <laughs>